our abundance, Father God. We decree and we declare that we walk by faith and not by sight. We have boldness, Father God, in our bosom. We thank you, Lord God, for we know, Father God, that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So today, through the stronghold of praise, Father God, we're going to give you honor and glory. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, give God praise. Give God praise.
So because you've heard religion all your life, that sounds right. That sounds right. But this seems right. So, so, so I got this situation, Master, Pastor, Jesus, Shepherd, God, I have a problem. And because I have a problem, He says, Master, I brought unto thee my son, which have a dumb spirit. Not, not necessarily dumb as in lack of knowledge, but deaf and dumb because he can't hear. Right? He says, oh, God, man. This person that's in the middle between relationship and religion, he says, listen, I don't know which way to go. I'm not gaining anything by listening to either one of you. I need you to tell me which way to go. And God in his says, read the word. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Find out for yourself. But, but but we go about dealing with this problem of religion and relationship. In verse 18 it says, And whatsoever he take of him, he tear of him, and he foameth and gnash him with his teeth and pine away. And I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out. And they could not. So, so now the relationship is not operating the way they should be operating. Right. Relationship, he, is, he says, I came to your disciples. And when I come to your disciples, every time, as I'm bringing them to, my, to your disciples, my son's having a seizure. That's basically what's going on. That's, what, that, that's, that's exactly what's going on. It says that, it says that he tariff and he pieth. It's convulsions and seizures. Pilot, he becomes stiff. He was having he was having a seizure, but not a medical one. It was a demon-induced seizure. And see, a lot of times things a lot of times things that look right and look normal, and we reason to say that this is this, it's not that. Sometimes it is the attack of the enemy. But we can't see the attack of the enemy because we look at it with, with eyes of reason. And because we look at it with eyes of reason, sometimes us who have relationships still fail when the spirit comes to attack. Because reason will always get in the way of faith. <coughs> it, it will always get in the way of faith. And that's, that's the problem with the atheist. The atheist allows reason to get in the way of what he knows God is saying to him. Because let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. If I didn't believe in God, I wouldn't spend my whole life talking about him. <laughs> Why? Why waste days and hours and minutes of this precious life that we've been given? If I didn't believe in God, to waste time on him. You see what I'm saying? So, 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 so the disciples, the disciples come and, 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 and you know, uh, immediately say, okay, well, I'm hindered. What about you, Jesus? What are you going to do? And Jesus is looking and, you know, he's watching the, the, the little boy. The little boy's laying there. And uh, Jesus says to him, and he answered him and saith unto him, saith, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you and bring him, bring him unto me? See, see, a lot of times we look like we have faith, but a lot of times it's not that we're faithful, we're faithless. See, we faithfully come to church, some of us. Some of us faithfully come to church and have no faith. And are faithless. And because we're faithless, we operate on a very carnal position in the community. See, because if the Bible says that the just shall live by faith, then that means that me being justified, if I live by faith, then I operate from a place of not reason. And I operate a place of faith, and then I'm faithful. Faithful in my actions, faithful in my spirit, faithful in everything I do. See, see, I don't come to church just on Sunday. Or Christmas and Easter. <clears throat> I'm in church 24-7. All the days of my life. When I wake up, when I wake up some mornings, I'm singing in my mind. Them, them songs we play, I wake up in the morning, them songs are playing in my mind. 
as, as I open my eyes up and I come from, from uh, unconscious to conscious, at that moment, right. I'm giving God glory in my mind. Yes. Listen, listen, I don't drink, smoke, lie, cheat. I don't stop, I didn't stop doing these things because I want to be good and because I live by faith. Because I operate from this place that God had put me in. He put me in this relationship, and because I had this relationship, I operate in that relationship. It's just like the relationship I have with my wife. I, I don't operate in the relationship when she sees me. I operate in that relationship at all times. <laughs> when she doesn't see me, when, when I'm not around, she can rest assured that I'm going to operate the same way as, I'm, as if she was standing right there. Come on now. What? <laughs> What'd you say? You ain't gotta say that. I'm gonna do it. See, see, covenant, covenant is a great is a great example of relationship. So so God is in a covenant with me, and so because God's in a covenant with me, he's not gonna move from what he said he's gonna do. He's gonna be faithful. And it doesn't, it's not based on my actions. And so because he's going to be faithful, that gives me the opportunity to uphold the covenant. So that means I'm going to be faithful. So, so my greatest example of the covenant I have with God is Christ marrying the church. So marriage is the greatest covenant that I have to understand the covenant with God. So that tells me when she's not around, I'm going to operate the same way God operates, and I'm going to be faithful. Yes. You see what I mean? So because I'm faithful... Because I'm faithful with God, it enables me to have the power to be faithful to her. Yes. Yes. It enables me to have the power to be faithful with the same covenant I have with you. Amen. That I'm here, rain, sleep, snow, shine, sniffle, no sniffle, pain, no pain. I'm in this pulpit doing exactly what God called me to do. Because, because my relationship with you matters. Amen. So even though some of you, you know, my pinky toe, the hang down on my pinky toe hurt. I can't put them shoes on today. I ain't coming. All right, let's get out of here. He said, verse 19, he says, He answered him and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? See, see a lot of times what happens is, is that uh, people require the sign. And when we require a sign, that's not faith. <laughs> the Bible said that the Jews require a sign and Greeks seek after wisdom, right? But, but we know that the power of God is by faith unto salvation. We know that by the foolishness of preaching, men shall be saved. So that means that as one man stands up here and speaks faith to you, and speaks life to you, and speaks the word of God to you, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God, that it, that it quickens salvation in the person. That's crazy. It's crazy to me that a man can stand up in front of you and speak the word of God to you, and your life begins to change. That's, that's a crazy phenomenon to me. I, it just, it's just to wrap my mind around that is, is just an awesome thing. So, so, so what this is telling me is, are you living life by requiring a sign? Do you need to see it before you believe it? Or do you believe it before you see it? See, because at the moment that you see it before you see it, it's when you're operating by faith. Yeah. At the moment that you see it, before you physically see it, before you can tangibly hold on to it. In the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. <coughs> and earth was our form and void. A lot of times what happens is we come to God, and in the beginning God created this, this aspect of our of a relationship with us. right? And your life is without form and void. And then God said that the, the Spirit of God hovered over the face of the waters. Right? So the Spirit of God begins to move in your life. right? And then God says, light be. And God said, let there be light, and light was. See, now the Bible says that we were made in the image of God, the image and likeness of God. right? And the Hebrews 11 says that the world were framed by the word of God. So because Hebrews 11 says that the world is framed by the word of God, when you want something to come into your life, you have to believe that it's in your heart. Because see, light was in God. And light was not, was, was not uh, existed yet, in existence yet. So when God says light be, light came out through faith. Because he knew that he was going to have light because he spoke it. See, a lot of times we believe.
believe that we're going to have things, but we won't put our mouth on it because there's a lack of faith there. So when it shows up, you say, I knew I was going to have it. But you were never bold enough to put your mouth on it. God willing. You leave the door open just a little bit. You just crack the door just a little bit. He said, how long must I walk with you to believe? Verse 20. And he brought him unto him, and when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear him, and he fell on the ground and, and wallowed and foamed. Fo see, see, let me tell you something. This is perfect. A lot of times when your moment is coming, when deliverance is coming, when healing is coming, when increase is coming, when all these things are coming, at this moment, the devil goes crazy. He attacks, and life goes haywire. And see, but, but what you have to understand is, what you have to understand is, is that we can't equate everything to the day, the, the, the devil. Because some things, some things come by adversary, some things come by adversity, which is the devil, but some things come by life and cir circumstances. And because of this, you have to be able to have discernment to know which is which. Because if you will equate something that the devil did, and you'll give him fuel and power when he had nothing to do with it. You see what I'm saying? So what happens is, you have two aspects of life that, that are coming against you. You have this evil, wicked aspect of life, and then you just have the circumstances of life coming at you. And you have to be able to discern the difference between the two. But when they go haywire, you have to understand that this is your moment. This is your moment of increase. This is your moment to go from faithless to faithful. This is your moment. And it's going crazy because it wants to hinder you. It wants you to be smaller. It wants to put you in a place where you can't operate. Oh, God. It wants to put you in a place of regression. It wants to put your back up against the wall. You don't know what to do. Because, because, see, because, see, even when life comes against you, when you're in this position, when you're in this position, you're weak. There's holes for the enemy. Now, see, now, see, this is what I teach here. What I teach here is greater is he that is in me than he yes. that is in the world. On, so what I know is, is that where Holy Spirit is present, devil can't be. Right. But if, 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 if Holy Spirit is suppressed, yes. And you're not operating in the power that is in you, you leave room for the devil. That's why the Bible says leave no place for the devil. Right. Leave no place for him because at the moment you don't leave any place for him, you have no, no choice but to operate in the Holy Spirit. But at the moment you leave place for the devil, right. <laughs> there it is. Cracks and crevices, that'll preach. It says, straightway, the spirit tear him, and he fell on the ground and followed foaming. And Jesus said, how, how, how long has this been going on? How long are you going to allow this thing to go on? How long are you going to allow life to be this way? Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I read that verse all week. I'm going to tell you about God's grace. I read that verse all week and didn't know how. It was going to pan out. And it just, it, see, you got to be receptive to God. Mm. How long, how long, how long, how long mm. are you going to wallow yep. in this condition? Jesus said, Jesus said, can you imagine? Look, look, it's going haywire. Life is going haywire. Jesus stooped down a little boy and said,
I've given you all things that pertain to life and godliness. And that means I've been supplied with everything. Jesus said, Jesus said, come on, man, Billy. Daddy, you've been letting this go on this long? This is what he's saying to the man. You've been really letting this go on with your baby for this long? So, 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 look, so, look, so look, he says, he says, and the man said, it's been happening since he was a child. He says, and oftentimes it has cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. He said, oftentimes, I've been so helpless, God. I just can't do anything with my boy. He just, he just, you know. Last day, he just, he throws himself into the fire. And he throws himself up against the wall. And he, and he just flips and tears. And he's foaming at the mouth. And I just don't know what to do, boy. I just don't know what to do. Yeah. And if you could do anything, mm. if you could just do anything, Look, hat in his hand, mm -hmm. right? Hat in his hand. If you, just, if you could just do anything, just, just do it, please. Please just do it. Jesus said, if you can, if you can believe, mm -hmm. come. Stop right there. In another translation it says, if I can do anything, Another translation says, if I can do anything, he said, you can do anything. Conditional or unconditional. All things are possible to him that believeth. So, 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 so now look at this. I mean,
Try to mark six. Jesus, Jesus is roaming about, right? Jesus is roaming about. He says, and he went from thence, and he came into his own country, and his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, From whence hath this man these things? And what wisdom is this which is given unto him, that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands? So listen, it's like me coming home to Hagerstown, right? Just say I'm Jesus, where it says I'm, I'm from, I'm from, you know, Hagerstown. And I come in, and we are, and, and, and me, and, me and these disciples, we are operating on a high level. We're doing all this stuff. You know, all of a sudden they say, ain't that the Ali's boy? Me and Coop used to do such and such and such and such, right? And um, where, where are you learning how to do all that? He says, is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and Judah and Simon? Are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. Who are you? Who do you think you are? But Jesus said unto him, a prophet is not with honor, but, is, but in his own country, among his own kin and in his own house. And he could do there, and, and he could there do no mighty work, save that he laid his hands upon a few sick folk and healed them. And he marveled, he marveled because of their unbelief, and he went around about the villages and teaching. Listen, the man was ineffective. Jesus was ineffective not because he lacked power, because there was no faith there. And then he could only do a little things. It, because, because as he comes back, as he comes back. There are some people that seem and say, wait a minute, there's a change. Mary, did you know? Sing. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Mark 16. It says, and afterward, he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat, and, and, and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart. So what happens is Jesus, Jesus has come back. He's died and he's come back from the dead, right? And he, he comes in and they're, and they're sitting around eating. And he says, man, what is wrong with you? You don't know me? Upbraided means that he rebuked them, that he was leaning on them, right? He said about their unbelief and hardness of heart. Let me tell you something. Wherever there's no faith in our life, Jesus is not in it. The man said, help, I believe, but help me with my unbelief. Yeah. Jesus said, okay, this area where you're going to believe for your son, I can operate here. Where you don't understand and where you won't, uh, won't believe, I'm not going to operate in there. I'm not getting in your mess. Come on. I'm not getting in your mess. You don't believe? Who is the arm of the Lord revealed to? It says, the Bible says, whose report shall we believe? And who is the arm of the Lord revealed to? Is God's arm revealed to the person who does not believe? His arm is revealed to the person that operates in faith. So he says, he says, he says, because they believe not them which had seen him after he was risen. See, now listen to this. He said, even though I'm standing here in front of you, somebody came and told you first. Some of us won't believe it because Jesus was standing right in front of us. Jesus said, hey, hey, here I am. What do you want me to do? Want me to walk on the water? What do you want me to do? <laughs> what do you want me to do? I'm standing right here. Look, look, when it, when it, this is good because, look, when Peter was on the boat, he 
he said. The disciples, they said, it's a ghost. And Jesus said, no, I mean, Peter said, no, no. Ain't no ghost. Jesus, if that's you, bid me to come. He said, come on. Peter said, Because of the relationship I have, he jumps right in my ear. What about me and 
this matter. Right. And see, and see, when he does that to me, I want to go all the way from where I was to on the complete opposite side of it. Back in the faith. Hold on. Yeah. I caught myself in unbelief. See, this is an opportunity for you. Because each and every one of us have this area. Some of us have less than others. Some of us have more, some of us have more uh, uh, um, episodes of non-belief. I can say non-belief, right? Yes. Mm. <laughs> so because some of us have more episodes than others, it tells me that we need to listen to God more. We need to be able to hear God on a different level. And a lot of times we can't hear God on, on, a, on the level that we, we need to listen to him because we don't look shiny like religion. We need to take the shininess of religion and intertwine it with the relationship that we have. Because a lot of times it's all this other stuff that's speaking to us because we have relationship and because we have this great understanding that we have relationship that trumps religion. We do the minute things instead of doing the things that God requires out of us. And the things that God requires out of us, and when we become shining on the outside with what's already on the inside of us, then we'll operate in a place where we can hear God on every level. Let me tell you something. The way you hear God is the way you're going to operate in faith. The less you hear of God, the less you're going to operate. Because everything else will be speaking to you. Everything else in life will be speaking to you. The bills, the pains, the issues, the devils, the demons. Everything else will be speaking to you and suggesting things to you. And you'll be operating here when you should be operating here. And the longer you live without godly character, the longer you'll go without operating on the level of faith that has been ordained for you. So what you have to understand is, is that we have to get our house in order. There's some things that are in the closet that have to come out. Come on, amen. Talk to me. We're not talking about the physical closet. So, so today, I want to challenge you. That the things that God has been dealing with you, the things that God has been dealing with you, these areas where God, because see, because see, um, Yesterday, right? Can I tell myself? You know, I got, I got this, this, this money thing. You know, I, I, I like to see money grow. I do. Right? I do. I, I like to see money grow. So, you get down with my pastor last, uh, the other night, and uh, he starts talking, you know. He said, he, he repeats you. He said, the bottom line, he slings on, he said, the bottom line is not the bottom line. She said that to me a week and a half ago. The bottom line, Pastor, is not the bottom line. Right? So, so then I'm thinking about church and my life, right? So yesterday, I leave work, didn't sell nothing. Probably no customers came in there. All tire kickers. They just come around kicking the tires on the car. I leave there, go to Outlet, get in Joseph Banks. Every suit that could fit me in there, I had up on the rack. I'm buying this one, this one, and this one. Baby, I'm about to buy three suits. I'm about to spend X amount of dollars. She said, oh. <laughs> See, I went to the extreme. I went to the extreme. I, I, what? Don't tell me I don't have no faith. <laughs> and a lot of times, it's not telling you not to be sensible. <laughs> I need somebody to walk me back off the cliff. <laughs> I said, she said, Jamal, just buy one. Uh uh, I want all three. Faith. I said, okay. Faith comes by here. And here is the word of fight me. <laughs> but, but see, but see, I had the spirit of let's go. Let's go. You know what I mean? I had the spirit of let's go. Let's tackle this thing. This aspect of my life where I'm lacking in faith. Okay, well, let's tackle it. And, 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 and it's like me running up on, give me a, 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 a lineman. Give me a big one, a big lineman. Okay, let me go back to what I know, because I ain't watch, I don't watch the refrigerator. You said, well, you said it, okay. How big was he, six what? Six three, three hundred. I 
can't do it. I can't win. If, 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 you, if you go, listen, them three suits wasn't in my heart. I was about to operate on a level that I wasn't ready for yet. I was about to. But see, in my mind, I was like, let's tackle it. When I get home, I'm going to show you how the word cuts. I'm telling her what happened, and she said, she don't even know this. She's about to know it. She says, Jamal, it has to be in your heart in order to do it. And she just. <laughs> because I was trying to do the action without free soup faith there. Free soup faith. <laughs> I'm trying to be playing for you. I'm trying, I'm trying to let you see yourself in my shortcomings. You see what I'm saying? Because for me to sit here and say I operate on all these great levels of faith, I'd be lying to you. Because there's people in here that know I don't. So I don't have a problem telling you that. I, 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 I miss it too. But I'm working on mine. How long has this condition been going on? Jesus said, how long are you going to stay in this condition of lack of faith? Because, because evidently, I think I'm taking care of things, but it's causing lack in my life because I'm not operating the way he said to operate. So because I think I'm being a good steward, which, which I'm still called to be one, but there's this area that calls for me to operate in faith when it comes to finances. <laughs> it says don't muzzle the ox in the Bible. There's somebody. Mm -hmm. She said, look, there's stuff being loose right now. Ah. Jesus said, there's stuff right now. We mm -mm, shut up. <laughs> she said, shut up. <laughs> Pastor Mike says, shut the cup. Mama Kuma on the side. Barack Obama. Come on, give God praise. I get this 
ripped up bag in office. I carry it everywhere I go. Mm -hmm. It's terrible, right? I like it. I want another one. I won't let it go. No, not that bag. I won't let the paper go. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you the truth. Let's deal with me today. I don't have a problem dealing with me in front of everybody. So, so I won't release the bag, but I'll keep walking around with a ripped up bag <coughs> with treasures in it. With treasures in it. With godly treasures in it. I'm walking around with a ripped up bag with godly treasures in it, and I won't do anything about it. You make me a ripped up bag with godly treasure in it, and you won't do anything about it. Come on. The Bible says that you can be a tre there's treasure in earthen vessels. And because there's treasure in earthen vessels, a lot of times the treasure's there, and we don't know the treasure's there because we don't look on the inside, we just keep dealing with life from the outside in. But we have to be able to deal with life from the inside out. What God has placed on the inside of us must take precedent of things that are on the outside of us. 